we're going. can find out. Okay. No. Oh, Wi-Fi record. Oh, there we go. Looks about good to me. All right, I'm leaving that there. I'm gonna hear my dog sent just drop his leash. Yeah, why not? That's funny. Cinch walk. Walk. All right. So here we are at the dog park with my wife. This is my, that's my ember. <laughs> we are going to learn how to do the walking properly. We're going to have to reteach Cinch because he's doing it wrong. Cinch, walk. So Cinch is on the e-collar. Big Martha is on the pinch collar. And we walk, went over it the other day and the very first thing we want to try to do is we want to try to keep the dogs to where their shoulders are not in front of our hips as we walk, if you can see that. That's super important because the dog that is in front of you thinks it's in charge. Probably not Cinch because he's gone through hundreds of hours worth of training and so he understands the context, but most dogs won't. So Cinch, walk. There you go. So when we get into the situation that, uh, that we need to correct them for being out in front, we just say nope and then tell them what we want them to do again, which is walk and allow them to get back into place. Um, you'll notice Amber is holding her leash back behind her leg like that so that when she strides, it automatically, the step back of her leg will, will it, the leash will touch the back of her leg and it will keep the dog naturally back in that position where if the dog is in a good position, then, um, then it will it will be without any sort of correction. But if the dog is in a poor position and gets too far ahead, it'll automatically correct them and you don't really have to think about it, which is nice. Don't you find that to be nice? I do. I like this track a lot. So that helps a lot. Especially considering I don't have a lot of uh, walking experience. Yeah. She's already kind of forgetting what we went over last. Yeah, and the, the thing about it is, is um, I can definitely tell everybody out there that walking is one of those things that is never done. Like for instance, Cinch is still being a pain in the butt about it. Hey, sit. I'm gonna make sure his collar is tight enough because he's not responding too much. So, when your dog is not responding to things like an e-collar, you have to keep in mind that the more excitement there is out there, the more their adrenaline is probably running, and the more it's going to take to get their attention. So that being said, when you actually turn up your collar or you issue a firmer correction, it doesn't actually hurt the dog anymore because the, uh, the discomfort from it or the startling from it walk, is masked by their adrenaline. So. The other thing is, is you should probably have your e-collar set to the right uh, channel. That'll make a difference. Sit. Good boy. So, walk. We were talking the other day about the auto sits. Um, and do you remember what we went over as far as that was concerned? Um, so when I stop walking, I want her to automatically sit by my side. Mm -hmm. Um, she had it down, 
So that's okay. Um, so the idea is, is in order to do, um, in order to do something as an automatic exercise, what you do is you just command it repetitiously. You do that. You automatically help them out with it until they get to the point where they're starting to anticipate your movement on it. So if I was going to do one with cinch, cinch, heel. No, heel. Thank you. So I go walk. And I stop and I say sit, and then he sits, walk, sit, walk, sit, and then as we go further, I should be able to walk, not say it, and then he should do it. And then I'll reward him just the same, okay. even though I didn't give the command. If he messes it up, then I'll just help him out again, and we'll continue doing the automatic command every single time. And just get it to where it's routine, and they expect it to be there because we're doing it consistently. Good girl. See? Perfect. So if you just automatically do it, you can help them with the leash pressure if you need to. Um, and what we talked about last time is if they are not stopping short, they're not stopping tightly with you and they're circling around, which we don't particularly care about whether or not she does that. But um, but we uh, want to make sure, we're, if we want to make sure that she stops flush with us in the heel position then we'll add a little bit of backward pressure at the instant that we stop so that um so that they they automatically get caught by the pinch collar and they um they have the pressure that causes them to stop automatically um so we can start to shape where they sit so that they'll sit in this position like cinches with me so good stuff okay Okay. Then I'll for sure be able to see it. Okay. I'm approaching the status of Geardo at this moment. Pretty wide. Oh, it's recording. Cool. Mm. All right. Well, we got that then. All Is right. that good, Cinch? Let's see if we can... All right. Shall we move? Yeah. Walk. Walk. So, once we get going, there's not a whole lot to it. Doing the doing the regular walks, Cinch. Do not use your dog's name as a correction, but uh, with Cinch, he's already kind of got that in because that's a bad habit of mine. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it would be better if you don't. Uh, using a dog's name means attention, so that it technically works, is if I get his attention and he fixes himself, then he doesn't, it's not a, it's not a correction. We also want to keep in mind that the word no is not a correction in and of itself either. It's just a warning saying the correction will come so these are all good things to know we have a beautiful park it's very lovely like my wife you flatter me so yeah we go the opposite way this time yeah this way mm -hmm. so, heel Enjoy the good view. Are you flirting with me, Mr. Smith? Maybe. Cinch heel.
Okay. Good girl. So sometimes what, what what she did, what Amber did right there was just right. Sometimes you give them a little bit of time, especially when you have these big, gigantic, slow dogs like this this moose right here. Um, you give them a second to to get on board, um, and if they're just plain out ignoring you, then that's not good. But if they're not, then you know, and they're just slow. Like um, I've had, I've trained some Great Danes that are also super slow, and so we give them the time to do that. So walk, free. When you get to a certain point that your dog is used to sticking with you, especially when you've gotten to the e-collar point, you can let them meander around and do the thing. Martha's not exactly in that position yet, or maybe she is. Sit. That's good. Good girl. Or maybe she is, but uh, we haven't gotten to the point where we want to test that yet, especially not at this point in time. Cinch. Cinch. I know, it's so hot, Cinch. Cinch. Hey, climb. Good boy. So, everything can be a climb, folks. Just keep that in mind. So, we'll see you later, Cinch. Walk. Nope. Walk. Walk. Get a little ahead of yourself there, boy. Sit. Down. Walk. Good dog. What a good dog. Heel. Heel. Walk. Legs. Legs. Good boy. Down. Whew. Walk. That's not very good. You should stop quicker than that. Climb. All right, wait there to climb. All four feet need to be up on the surface in order for the climb to work. Now, you can see what he's doing here. He is nosing the ground. Nope. As soon as his foot came off, he becomes wrong. And I warned him with the no. Nope. And then he gets back up on there. But it's perfectly legal for him to have one foot off, or for to have his nose off. It's as long as all four feet are up on there. And that's the rules that I made up. And so I just enforce them in the way that I want to enforce them. And that uh, is the, what the dog understands because my physical actions match what it is that I'm telling him. Heel. Good boy. You want to try something, Cinch? Climb. Climb. Cinch, climb. Here, come around, dummy. There you go, come on. All right, see you later. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got, we've got all sorts of time. This is supposed to be organic, in your words. Right. Right. And you keep helping him with climb, and he knows that, and Martha's not getting her sit when I ask her to. Huh? So, so go ahead and put extra pressure on. So when you stop, just kind of like go ahead and pull, and you can you can actually pull with your hand. I, so here, why don't you take this for a second, and then I'll take her, and you take my drink. Mark, walk. So whenever I'm doing it, I mean, even if I have it back behind here, I'll go ahead and use my left hand for that when I stop. 
I'll go ahead and put the pressure and I'll, I'll, I'll make it to where she can't even get in front of me. Okay. Also, another thing that I was going to say earlier is when you when you say walk, just take off. Like, don't don't wait don't for wait them. Don't wait for her. All right. So walk is my warning that I'm taking off and I'm leaving without you. Gotcha. So, so walk. When they slow down like that and they're trying to trying to lag, then I'll speed up. the efforts of pulling them along it's in the efforts of um, getting pressure on them till they speed up and then then they loosen the pressure by coming along so we don't actually try to use our hands to get them to speed up as much as we use our motion and so I, I will just you know and I'll, and, and I'll leave the slack in it to where whenever she speeds up and tries to catch up with me that she relieves her own pressure so okay. quiet hands is always a good thing except for obviously in the situation where we're putting back pressure for the auto sit. So, okay. Walk. So you see she couldn't get any further because of where my hand is. Gotcha. And you get better and better at that. It's not something that has to be perfect right off the bat, but you can just make an effort right. in that direction. Let me try. And Yeah. Well, now just tell her to sit. She's been very stubborn with me. She's yeah. With me today. Well, she might be. She might be having her brat moment because we're not uh, using cookies today. Yeah. Um, and she, we're usually we used cookies last time, and so she's kind of like, yeah, man, what gives? But she's gonna find out that she has to obey either way. Right. And just sometimes she'll get rewarded, and sometimes she won't. And that's a good thing because we don't want them to get dependent on the cookies. Walk. Perfect. So go ahead and use the sit command right right as you're stopping okay. like don't do, in this case so what we when we're doing an automatic exercise we use a, a term that's called three in a freebie and so three is just an arbitrary number it could be 27 in a freebie it could be two in a freebie whatever but what we do is we go with automatic help which means the the help with the leash help with the vocal you know with the actual command itself and we do that two or three or four times in a row like i did earlier and then then we take the help away but we want to get them in the rhythm of hearing it and knowing that it's coming so and then that's whenever we give her extra time to get it right okay. but but so i shouldn't be giving her extra time at the front i should just go ahead and be giving her the command and then yeah you give you give her the extra time on the freebie not on not not gotcha. on the on the one two threes okay. does that make sense Walk. Hush, Cinch. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's good. And this is this is not a any sort of criticism because you are doing this, but um, making sure that even whenever they don't do it perfectly, that we reward once they've completed it, no matter what. Yes, once she does it, then we can still reward afterwards, letting her know that it's not, we're not holding any grudges, we're not upset, but once you've done it right, I use the, the petting is actually what tells you that you've done it right, so that's great, You and you're doing that perfectly. The more stubborn the dog, the larger that number when we're dealing with three and three. She's, she's probably going to be one of those ones that's going to push because she's just a she's just a cantankerous, ornery, stubborn dog. Brat. She's a brat. You're she's brat. a gigantic brat. See this? Brat. This picture goes next to brat in the dictionary. Yes, it does. So, brat, cool. brat. Shall we move? Yeah, I think Cinch is probably so sad right now. Ah, he, he, so sad. He, he, he does. He does fairly well.
he's been doing this for a long time. He is probably excited out of his freaking mind. He's like, I want to go do stuff. Dad, let me do stuff. What? What is it? What is it? We'll see you in a bit. No. Maybe err on the side of more of the upward pressure with the leash than the push down on the butt. The push down on the butt, I find, is probably more aptly used for dogs that don't know how to sit. Um, because it's it's more of just a suggestion. Like, it's help in a manner of, like, you don't know what it is that you're doing wrong. Whereas in this situation, she absolutely knows what she's doing wrong. She's just ignoring you. So that's where we make it uncomfortable. Okay. Like, we add, we add extra... Yeah, so whenever you, yeah, the correction that, that encourage sits is straight up because in order, when they go from a stand to a sit, their, their shoulders actually come up a little bit and their head comes up a little bit. So that's going to be the... Walk. Cinch, walk. He's a good dog. Nope, walk. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Down. Yeah, she was so much better last time. Yeah. Yeah, because she's a brat. She's such a brat. Yeah. Sometimes it's, sometimes with brats you get uh you get a whole different thing whenever they get what they want and when they don't. Right. And I think that's kind of the definition. Well I think this is very evident of what I've been saying about how they ignore me. Right. She, yeah, and especially with dominant dogs like Mastiffs and Healers, they will, they, they, they're very dominant dogs, so they will get away with whatever they can. Right. And, and Martha is chiefest of that because, you know, she was in a situation where some unnamed person was letting her get away with all sorts of stuff because he just loved her to death. And he thought that spoiling her was good for her, and it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because now Mommy can't get her to do anything she needs her to do. Yeah. Walk. Down. Not you. <laughs> Walk. Don't you be sneaking. Walk. Hey, nope. I'm Walk. <laughs> Copyright infringement. We'll have to cut that out of the video. Probably not, actually. Sit. I like this little lake. It's not too bad. Climb. When you get better at it, we can do send outs to climbs. I'll show you guys how to do that. Not today. Walk. Cinch. Walk. Thank you. Yeah, you're being a bad boy. Nope. Walk. You're being a bad dog, Sit. aren't you? Sit. Sit. Okay, so you're doing good. Down. This is not anything that you're doing wrong. Um, but so um Hold, keep keep that on your wrist. Okay. I'm going to show you the difference between the pull. You know, like whenever I pull, generally people who are not my wife will pull back. <laughs> this there's something wonderful that's said through that, so hold on to it. But what what I what what you need to do sometimes whenever you have a dog that's extra stubborn that's not paying attention to the pull is you need pop, okay. and so it's a snap and release. So if we're why don't you hold this and watch me? So walk. See how, I, see how I kind of got the walk happening? And so whenever I stop, it's it's it's, it's a easy. snap okay. and then release. And that's the thing is because a lot of is times... Is this like a bend and snap? Hmm? Never mind. No. <laughs> so, see, you're, you're ruining the frame. So we're going to have to cut that out. Now we're, now we're, we've got a flow issue. Okay, so, sorry. <laughs> so, um, now the, uh, so the idea is, is whenever you pull, 
it shuts the brain down. And so it, sometimes you'll get a dog to freeze, especially a dog like a Mastiff, is because they do have tend to be a higher anxiety type of dog. And so when you put that pressure on, they tend to freeze. And so with the snap, what it does is it, it, is it causes the communication, but then immediately lets up on it so that they can choose which action to do next. So they can offer a different response. Walk. And so, walk. See how she anticipated it that time? Yeah, now she's like, lay down. I'm yeah, gonna well, lay she's, down. She's, she goes super submissive to me, and it's it's a way that she thinks that she gets what she wants. And you'll find a lot of dogs that will absolutely submit because people give up on whatever it is they're asking for. Whatever the dog acts like it's afraid. She's not afraid. You see her at the door. I know. Walk. Sharpness of the action of the front on the one, two, threes, you know, before the freebies will cause the freebies to happen faster. So the sharper we are and the more clear and intent our, 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 our uh, communication is up front, the less times you end up having to do it. And that's the argument against people wanting to always be soft with their dogs is sometimes when you're soft with your dogs, their dogs, the dogs will actually resist you more and therefore you end up doing more correction to them in the long run as opposed to correcting effectively once or twice and then they get the idea and then they say no I'm, I'm not arguing you know and then they'll they'll end up doing it right walk continuing to bite me because mm -hmm. she thinks it's going to work. So in that situation, Cinch, walk. Cinch, come. Down. Thank you. Nope. So what will end up happening is sometimes what you need to do is you need to actually just make it happen. Bring them to the position. Down. Bring them to the position that they need to be in so that you can go ahead and tell them they're good. Whether they did it themselves or whether they, whether you kind of forced it to happen, you still get the opportunity to tell them what is right, you know, what it is that you're looking for. And so a lot of times you'll end up avoiding a lot of the corrections by just forcing it to happen real quick and then telling them that, hey, that's what I want. Okay. You know, same thing with the bathtub I did on the bath video and stuff like that is so I can just pick them up and put them in there and then it's over with. Then right. we don't sit there and struggle against it because she's willing to struggle. And so at that point, you're I'll, on uh, Struggle Street, Martha. Yeah, Struggle Street. So that that's what that's what happens when you get in those resistance situations. Okay. And sometimes, yes, she probably will be a little bit more resistant with me just because I have a different kind of authoritative relationship with her. So you actually have the opportunity to not develop that as strongly as I have had to because we've had to struggle through I mean we had to struggle through aggression right. at one point in time with her so I've had to be firm with her on a couple of occasions and she she does find out that whenever she's being aggressive and I be aggressive to her then she submits and it gets me to stop but she's applying that same lesson to things like walking on a leash is that if she be if she's submissive then I'll stop and that's not the case so it's just more handling that gets gets us over that so juice walk nope sure I'm happy about this weather it's a little windy. I'm wondering if you're going to like be loud enough on there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the GoPros are for. So, shout out to GoPro. Cinch, climb. Down. Pop her again. There you go. That's fine. No, she she ended up following through, and that's okay. 
Um, but if she's being a pain and just like doing it extra slow just to be a brat, then don't hesitate to pop her because what you expect is the really the only thing that matters. And so we do wanna have grace with them in situations where they're actually struggling or they're too anxious. But if she's just going, forget, forget you, I'm gonna take my time and you know, I'll, I'll you think so, you know. <laughs> If she's doing that kind of thing, then go ahead and correct her again and say, hey, no, you're going to sit down as I tell you, not, not, uh. There you go. See, now that right there was an anxious thing because I was behind. And so, and the way she looked back, she's yeah. like, I'm, I'm not sure. It's just too, it's overwhelming for her. And that is a mastiff thing. They're bred to get overwhelmed easy. That's what makes them good guard dogs. Is because dogs fight when they're anxious, not whenever they're confident. And so mastiffs, bulldogs, any sort of fighting breed are bred to be more anxious. And so we, we just have to take extra care with them. Walk. Walk. Hey! No, heel. Walk. You're being a bad dog. As soon as I get done with this drink, I'm getting your collar back out so that I don't have to fight with this thing. Hey! So you guys see how I'm just, I keep backing up. As soon as he gets ahead of me, correction, I'm backing up. And he needs to get all the way back. And I'm going to keep backing. And I'm correcting as I do. And you see how stressed he is. He's not stressed at all because he's used to these corrections. Nope. I'm going to keep backing up until he gets back to me. So he needs to work hard to get back. No wonder it's not working. I know my video is not going to be too good with the wind and the fact that I'm holding it weird. So it seems like it's about to storm. Look at that hair blowing around. It says walk. Looks like we're going to cut it because it's getting a little stormy. All right. Love you guys.